Good morning. Good, Good morning. Good morning. Uh, How's everybody doing? Welcome on out. It's a quiet morning here. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting started and wake up. Oh, how's everybody doing in chat? <laughs> I'm sorry. I just looked over and saw the desert picture. I didn't realize that was there. Oh, yeah. Spoo's, Spoo's in the desert grinding sand. Mm hmm. <laughs> oh my god. Azure Shock, Susie, Velo, Devil Angel, good morning. I so, actually made it, everybody. I actually made it. I was actually up in time, so. What is up, everybody? So yeah, um, we got a fun little topic that we just kind of got into it, just chatting before the podcast about, uh, you know, mental distractions and, and the many forms that they come in. Uh, mm -hmm. that can, yeah. that can affect not only you, your stream, your content and wherever your content lives, mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah, and it, go ahead. No, no, no. I was just, I was just going to say, we, um, chat, we just started talking a little, just a little bit ago and we were talking about, um, it was a positive thing. We're talking about how, you know, how positivity breeds positivity and, how you know what's been going on with a lot of our communities lately and how how they've been growing by leaps and bounds and where how a lot of that comes from that that base of positivity and, and what we moved on to after that is is what negativity actually does and how that affects you and how it affects you know every single aspect of what you do it affects your streams it affects what you post um and it becomes a distraction a very bad distraction so you may find yourself focusing on just using this as an example, you know, like focusing on a DM, like somebody sends you something negative over discord and you spend an hour just crafting this perfect response. And you realize by the end of it, that you've wasted a really good hour that you could have spent on something way, way better and way more productive and way more positive for yourself. So that's where the conversation is going to be going this morning. Yeah. <laughs> it's about, you know, is about that positivity and all that. And I've seen, I've seen such a, um, I've seen such an impact, especially these last two weeks, the channel has just been crashing through gates again. And a lot of that is just, again, it's all these people that are, that are coming into the channel and how these people are inviting their friends in and they're introducing me to more of their friends and they're wanting to hang out. And um, once you, once you head down that positive path, and you're you're talking and working with people that are truly positive it always leads to these these other things and it's been absolutely incredible it's been absolutely incredible yeah it's just like the the people you surround yourself with is kind of like your your entry point right it's almost like mm -hmm. the way the category works is like if there's a really positive person at the top of the category welcoming new people in that's the experience people are going to connect with marbles with mm -hmm. and that 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 drives right back to your channel is the people who are in your chat and the people who have the loudest voices are the ones who you know give that perception of what the stream is like and what your community is like and and that comes from just the simple people that you breathe you you welcome around you yeah you know yeah and and That's... yeah it just like it it, it 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 goes from affecting how you wake up to the posts that you make, to your content, your stream, and how long you're able to stream because negativity wears you down. Mm -hmm. And if, if you plan an eight hour stream and you get something in Discord DM, if you're reading that or whatever during a stream at two hours in, well, now you gotta go six hours with that floating in your head. And if you're used to responding to things like that, then you're going to be thinking about that and it's gonna start festering and building those thoughts during your stream and that's something that I struggled heavily with for a long time, mm -hmm. because not only do we have opinions about the stream, we have opinions about the game and the community and what we're building. Yeah. And, oh yeah. And so, yeah. So personally, like I'm, I still struggle with it a little bit, but I'm learning and learning and learning and just trying to overcome and focus on the right things and not give attention to the things that are just distractions. Yeah. Yeah, Abs absolutely. It's so, and it's really, it, it really is tiring. You know, like I, like, like, you know, I was we were before the stream started, like you and I were talking and I, and I said, you know, like, like I was, I'm so exhausted this morning from yesterday's stream, but there's a huge, huge difference between being exhausted from a stream that was that amazing 
and being exhausted because the stream was so negative or you had surrounded yourself with negativity and all everybody was doing when they came into the stream was complain and all that. And it's it's not about people sharing their feelings, like like people sharing their feelings when they come into your stream, like your community and all that, that's one thing. Right. Because you can help, you can talk to them about it, you can help pick them up and, and kind of turn things around. But when you yourself allow yourself as the, as the streamer or the leader of your community to get absorbed into that, and allow yourself to be drugged down by all that that comes in and and we see it we see it all the time you know there's there, there'll be days where people come in like everybody's having a bad day yeah <laughs> and you're and you're putting out extra energy to help like pull everything you know everything back up but usually it ends up being worth it because once you have done that as a streamer you've put that energy out there and you've made somebody's day better they will throw that back to you you know, that, right. that, that does come full circle. So, you know, I would say, don't be, a, don't be afraid to throw that extra energy out there along with it. You know? Absolutely. That's so important. Spuhera desert. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, go ahead. No, I was just, I'm sorry. I just, I just saw a center cut vacancy. Spoo is a desert. I'm going to say, yes, yeah, Spoo is glass. <laughs> 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 the Spuhera. <laughs> Miss that one, Darcy. You mean oh streamer, streamers aren't your life coaches? Well, they could be if that's something you look up to. Of course, anybody mm -hmm. could be. <laughs> you would, you would, Jiggly Fly, Fly Joe, along those lines, you would be surprised. You would be surprised what, what people look up to streamers and what people will ask streamers. Well, that's why um, streamers aren't just rep, like looked at as streamers, they're influencers, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's not a, that's not a terrible thing. That's not a terrible thing at all. It's, you know, the, the, as a streamer though, you do have to be careful with what you answer and how you answer it. You know, you need to make sure you qualify certain responses with, I am not a professional. <laughs> I, I am here for you. I, I I'm, I'm more than happy to help you, but I am not, you know, I am not a psychologist. I am not a tax advisor. I am not an attorney. Um, some of the things I have been asked about, like I have no clue. You know, I have no clue being, being like a mental health advocate, I get asked a lot about mental health and there's certain things I can answer just based on experiences I've had or experiences I've had personally. And there are sometimes it's like, you need to, you need to be talking to a counselor or you need to be talking to a psychologist about this because oh, for sure, I'm, it's out of my, it, you know, it's out of my wheelhouse <laughs> <laughs> by a long shot, right? By a long shot. And there's but nothing, a lot of, there's nothing wrong with reaching out for that kind of help either. Oh yeah, no, no, not at all. Not at all. But I, you know, but again, you just need to, as a, as a streamer, you need to be careful with what you answer and how you respond. And sometimes just how personal you get too. Um, so, so just be a little bit careful with, with how you handle those things. You don't want to give somebody wrong advice. You know, you don't want to give somebody or, or, or pretend to be an expert where you're not, you, you don't want to do that. Cause that's going to lead to all kinds of other problems, you know, along the way. Well, of course. Just don't know what, don't know like any of the context of what's going on. Right. Mm -hmm. And that can just walk yeah. down a weird path. It gets, <laughs> it, it, well, and it gets, it gets odd. Yeah. It, get, it gets, it, it can get strange at times. And there are times where, um, there are times where you'll be asked questions that you really shouldn't or don't want to answer. You know, it's yeah. Like, I'm sorry, I'm not I'm not going to answer that or or something of that nature. But coming back around to original topic, like like when somebody reaches out to you, don't be afraid to you know say something. All right, make sure, you know don't be afraid to respond. Just make sure that you're. You know they, they're qualified to be answering the question that that they're asking you because they're people are going to ask you a lot of questions that you honestly don't know the answers to so what, what's a good method you find of dealing with a question that you maybe don't want to address on stream or even or even respond to the question on stream because it cha it'll change the whole topic it'll change the direction yeah um for me there's i'm very direct with stuff like that actually i found that taking a very direct approach has really been been the best for me so i will actually say to somebody i'm i'm not like if it's something that i'm willing to answer just not like broadcast across the stream it's like i'll answer that for you but get into my discord and hit me up in the dms yeah. and i'll and i'll talk to you about it there because sometimes it's something that 
I'm willing to share. I just don't want to get into it on stream again, or I don't want to change the direction of the stream. But I, and it's, it's something that I want to have a full conversation about, or sometimes it will get too personal for the person I'm talking to. Right. It's asking me the question, like, especially if it's an established community member, somebody that I really know. Um, so I know I don't want to get into it too personally with them. So same thing, let's yeah. take it to DMS. Just reach out to me in the discord. I'll be more than happy to talk to you about it. I've had that happen actually several times. Uh, with, if it's a question I don't want to answer, I'll just straight out tell them I'm not answering that. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to answer that on stream. I'm, I'm sorry. It's, that's not a question. And you know, it's a lot of times questions like that, that I get asked on stream myself, like in my experience are questions you shouldn't ask anybody anywhere on Twitch, you know, like you, you would never go into, you'd never walk into a stream and ask them this particular question. Right. And so uh, again, I find like being direct and setting, we talk about this all the time. Like you have to set boundaries with people. You have to make sure you set that boundary right away. Just set the realistic expectation and, and don't be afraid to say, no, I'm not, I'm sorry. I'm not going to, I'm not going to answer that. Right. You know, that's not something I talk about. Um, at the same time, and this is something that I've learned along the way as well. Don't be afraid to be personal, at least to a point, because people are there, like in terms of growth, people are there to get to know you. Right. They want to get to know you. You know, I've never been afraid um, of the basics, especially. Like, I've never been afraid to talk about my age. I've never been afraid to talk about the fact that I'm a grandfather. You know, I've never been afraid to talk about any of that stuff because it's fun. It's little pieces of me. Right. And that is one of the things that people want to see when they come to your stream. And especially if, again, if you're looking to grow, you want to make sure that you're not afraid to answer like some of those, those basic questions, but make sure that when you come to stream that you, you in your mind know where your boundaries are. All right. Yes. I want, yes, I'm willing to share my age. No, I'm not. Yes. I'm wearing, willing to share whether I'm married or not. Yes. I'm willing to share whether I have kids or not. Um, be very careful with, with, how people can figure out exactly where you are. Um, you know, it, it talk about, you know, where in general, what location you're in, that kind of thing. You know, how far am I willing to go if somebody asks me where I live? Right. All that, you know, all that stuff. But again, once you've established that in your mind, make sure that you answer those questions directly. Don't let yourself get hung up or uneasy about it because that feeds into negativity. And that will also exhaust you while you're streaming. Yeah. Again, just be willing to give, you know, know again, know your personal boundaries, what you're willing to share, and then make sure you answer it directly and quickly. And that way you can just move on from the question. Yeah. That's like, yeah. it's often like I try, I try my best to create a rule set and live within it. Mm -hmm. Even if sometimes it's like, uh, you know, because once yeah. you start breaking those rules, then it'll be like, oh, why don't you do that? Right. And then you start questioning all that stuff. It's always a challenge to to stick so aggressively to a rule set for your channel, right? Because you mm -hmm. you want to like that exact thing is like you want to be open for growth. You want people to ask those questions that could walk the line, but yeah. obviously you know then you don't want to welcome the questions that are way beyond the line. So if you start yeah. inching yourself closer and closer to that line, then it welcomes the stuff a little bit further and further. Yeah, so that's always a challenge, and then yeah, then that walks into the whole. Is it, you know, then are you festering that negative, you know, feeling in chat, da, 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 right? And then that starts coming up and just breeding that, breeding that community around what you don't want. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't want to, you know, it's, it's okay to, the other thing that needs to be said there is sometimes you will get into conversations with people either like, you know, through discord on stream, whatever in your community. And all the questions are within your rule set. And then all of a sudden they will, as they as they grow more familiar with you and you grow more familiar with them, then they start asking questions that go beyond it. And don't ever be afraid, it's another thing too, is don't ever be afraid to throw the brakes on when that occurs. If, if something like that happens, it's like, no, I'm sorry, now we're getting a little too far into that. There are, there are ways to very nicely say it, and I've had it come up dozens of times now where I've had to say to people, it's like, look, that's a little too personal. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna answer that one. And they're totally cool with it. They're right. totally cool with it. You know, they're still, these are people that are still in my community to this day. Nobody was insulted by that. Right. Um, so. It's tough, right? Because you're, you know, we stream so much, right? You're always online, you're always spending time with these people. And it's sometimes hard to draw the line between 
when you go from viewer, community member, and then you start walking into friendship. Yeah. And where do you draw that line where, you know, where somebody becomes a friend or they become close enough where they're almost a friend and they're starting to ask like a lot more personal questions and you're engaging at a more personal level, right? Mm -hmm. And then that could be challenging because I've seen people consider people in their community friends, yet they haven't really broken those boundaries yet. And then they start perceiving everybody in their chat as friends. And the I think that can get into a dangerous zone as well. Yeah. Because then where do you draw the line with information and, and all this other stuff, right? Mm -hmm. There's There are certain... Um... There are certain social interactions too that can really help you gauge. Like, 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 we got to be honest here. There are people in your communities that you are going to end up being really, really, really good friends with. Absolutely, like really good friends with, and you're going to be able to have talks with them. The, I think the key there, Mike, is to be willing to give it time. Like, like I feel, I see this happen a lot online. Like people are willing to share too much too quickly. Right. And that's, you know, and, and trust is a, is a great thing, but you gotta be careful out there. You, you really do, you know, like, and I definitely have members of my community that are, that are close now. And I have members of my community that are growing closer and closer all the time. Um, and, and I, there's nothing wrong with any of that. I, I just, you know, I can't advise enough about being about being careful right you now because there's 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 so many things you can say the wrong thing get the wrong information out there um if a friendship goes sour or something like that that can, can cause all kinds of damage within your community because all oh, this person was an established community member why all of a sudden are they behaving like this and all that so the the, the key to that is it's not a, about being afraid to make friendships or friendships within your community that that's it's not true. People do amazing things for you, and 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 because it's only it's only gonna it's only natural that right. that's gonna happen. That you're gonna make friends with them. Just make sure you put the time into these friendships so that you know and they know what level you're actually rolling at. Right. Yeah. You know, and that's 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 really that's really important. I definitely have, but I I can't deny I definitely have some very close friends within the community, and I think I've got some more for more really close friendships that are forming because right. well you just spend awesome, so much time you know? with people right mm -hmm. like there's some people who are just always in chat and you always notice them and and you appreciate it and it's like you often get the feeling of like oh man they're always here you know and mm -hmm. and you get that sense of connection with people oh yeah and yet you've you've never met them in person you've never really had a private discussion with them sometimes right and it's yeah. like whoa this is this is int it's just interesting to me. Like this is such a new world for me as well. Being online for two years, right? We're coming up to two years straight of Jeez, yeah, pretty much being online almost every day, and it's just it's insane. And and you just hit your two year mark of streaming, yeah, right. So you're also yeah, at that level. Was, yesterday was two, so because we're not talking about status on on Twitch, we're talking about just friendship status. So it doesn't matter. Like it's just time, right? That these things yeah. build across. So it doesn't matter whether you're a partner or not. Like you still have those people around you that mm -hmm. have been around for a very long time and you're like, whoa, and you start seeing those subs and you're like, holy cow, like 24 months? Like, yeah, what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm about to have I'm actually about to have my first uh, my very first 24 month alert is about to fire. Oh, nice. He reached out. He reached out to me. Yeah, he reached out to me and said, you know, just a couple of days, bro. Just a couple of days. He was hoping it would be in time for yesterday because it was the Twitch anniversary, but I, but it's the timing was just a little bit off. So, uh, but it's yeah, it's it's really you you form these you do you form these these friendships and these relationships. And I I think something that was really important, something that you said to me um, when we were talking about the relationship that you and I have, right? And that is, you know, it's it's like I was waiting to meet you in person. To yeah. see what to to see all the way like what you were you know what you were really like and all that and it's very you know it's very and how long have we known each other like how long have we been working in the same direction before we finally decided that our Cross paths, paths were run yeah. completely parallel yeah and that's you know and, and and that's just it like it takes again time was put in yeah you know a lot of time like for you and I it was over a year just using us as the example yeah you know I've got people in my community now we're running close to two years already and 
yeah, that's a that's a big deal. Yeah, that's a that's a big deal. Well, you start to see like, people's habits, and I think that mm -hmm. that builds so much, right? Then you understand the person, and then it's like, okay, well, once I meet this person in person, it's gonna just, yeah, you know, that's the final step. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was, you know, we we talked about that at TwitchCon. It's like I've never hugged so many people I've never met before in my life. Right. Like instantly. <laughs> like like there wasn't like nobody even questions. It's like. Oh hey, you know, finally, you know, and you get to know people in person, you get to see them and um these people you've spent all this time getting to know and then you get a a real feel. I will say though, Mike, that when at TwitchCon there wasn't a single person that I met at TwitchCon that I've gotten to really like really know online that didn't behave and act the way I expected them to. Right. Once I once I actually got there because we had spent so much time getting to know, you know, just about everybody. Right. Um, you know, so everybody I met there, like, like they really did, they, they really did like, like right down to their mannerisms and everything behaved exactly the way I expected them to behave. It was really interesting to well, me. It's, it's like, can you really get to know people that well online? I think over time it is hard to put on a facade, like a something fake, right? Like it's, it's mm -hmm. hard to put on a fake persona for an extended period of time and stay consistent to it mm -hmm. you know it's always tough so yeah that's why i think is like when you meet them in person they're often the way that you see them because you've watched them for six months to a year and you understand the way they actually are because it always comes through it always comes yeah. through who a person actually is over time right yeah <laughs> Well, nobody, nobody can fake it for eight hours a day, five days a week. It, it would just be, it would be too exhausting. This is so it would exhausting. Be too exhausting. You know, it's like, I can't, I don't have the energy to be anything but myself on camera. And, and it, it, it's very true for everybody else that seems to be within my circle on Twitch. Like it, it, everybody is just so, just so genuine. Not that they tell you everything. But you, like you said, you can't fake it for that long. Like you really do get to know the person over time, and when that's the case, it makes the it makes the face to face meeting a hundred times easier. Right. Like like there's already several barriers that have been ripped down. So. Yeah. Totally. But, I, but yeah, it's, it is. It's, it was very interesting to me that that again, you you meet these people in person, and they really are the way you thought they were. It's like, this is very, it's not like when you're meeting like a movie personality or a TV personality and you're like, what are they like in real life? It's like, no, that's just how they are in real life. Right. They're themselves. So. So good. Um, yeah, Java, that's, that's exactly it. It's like being able to be yourself more than not. And I think that's an, like, that's like a life goal of mine is that when I was in the military, I didn't feel like I was able to be myself. And that's why, you know, I, I wanted to get out and I wanted to move on because I felt like constrained. I wasn't able to express myself with games and just all the stuff that I want to be a part of. And that's a really good point is like, if you're not happy with your work and that could, that could be streaming. Like if you're not happy doing it, then that, that's like the start of the end right away. Right. You're starting something you're not even into and i know you're not talking about streaming i was just making a point um even if streaming is like that thing where you go online and you feel you don't feel like it's you you know you got to address that and find out why right like if you, that's, if you're just not invested in it you know there's there's so many oh yeah sorry i keep trying to chime no, in no, go, go ahead, ahead. Go ahead. You, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to i'm trying to like wait until you're finished and you, you're when you're taking breaths i'm like ah, ah, no. <laughs> No, all I was all I really wanted to throw in there, Mike. Like, like I, I completely agree with everything you're saying. But what I wanted to throw in there too is that's part of what not being yourself is part of the exhaustion factor and the fatigue factor, and that's one of the things that contributes. Like, you'll see people talking online about how they're having trouble hitting hitting the start button that day, or the go live button that day. Yeah, that's part of that's part of what causes that is just that exhaustion from not being yourself. If you can get in there and being yourself, like one of the things, one of the I'll use a glary example. One of the big things for me that was actually tiring me out that I that I didn't do for a while, especially when I first started streaming, yeah. I was always told growing up to stifle my laugh. Really? And so when it came when I wanted to laugh, instead of actually laughing on stream like I do now, I would be like 
you know that's the, i would make this really bizarre like nasal like but sound. contained and i'm like why am i and i could dig finally get to the point where i was like why am i doing that you know but that's but that's one of those it's one of those things like it doesn't seem like it's such a big thing until you realize that you're going to be on camera for five to seven hours or eight hours or nine or ten and you're not being yourself and that does wear on you over time yeah you know? so i'm like you know what i'm going to just start laughing out loud and just letting it roll and see how that goes but when you don't again when you're not being yourself if you're if you find that you go through a lot of i just don't want to i just don't want to stream that day or i'm just not feeling it that day that's usually it's a good sign it yeah it, it's become and and the the desire the lack of desire to go online is something now for me that has gotten to be so foreign because i'm so excited when it's time to stream i have so much fun when we stream yeah. that um when somebody comes to me and says you know i i'm just not feeling it or i don't feel like doing it that day it's like there's something going on with you then that that's it's either you're not enjoying what you're doing you're not being yourself which is a lot of times what it is um because again that wears you down trying to pretend to be something else or somebody else is very tiring totally it's very tiring you know and that comes to like just pretending to be happy as well yeah right oh yeah just like the simplest one is you know being a happy person and being happy with what you're doing and if that's that's like the entry point and if you can't achieve that that's going to bleed into mm -hmm. everything else you're doing and walk into that whole negativity mix and and then you start spitting that on on twitter and all the other platforms and you start seeing it in the content and then you start seeing that person walk the path and you're like all right like when are you going to notice that you just need to look inwards and find what you're not happy about mm -hmm. and change it and change that thing Maybe it's not streaming. Maybe it's something that you stream that you don't like that makes you feel bad. Or maybe it's something before stream. You never know, right? Like, and you just got to find that, that and eliminate it somehow. That, 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 that little thing that keeps irritating you on stream that you keep forgetting to change before the stream starts. Or like there's so many little things that can, that can contribute to that. Um, something that I learned years ago. It was actually part of a sales training I did when I was still like doing insurance and financial services and all that. But that is you need to eliminate little issues in your life, little ones, because they're little annoyances and you don't think about them much on the daily. But what happens is, and, and it, it, this reflects back to streaming, because again, we, we stream for so many hours a day, right? Like it's, it's five hours, seven hours, whatever. So if you're gonna do that, any little annoyances are going to start grinding you down. You know, so it's one of the reasons why I always keep, this goes back to writing everything down. Like I, I always keep the notepad software open and either if it's, whether it's an idea, whether it's something that's irritating me or the community, anything like that, I will actually take the time to write it down. I have a keep like a priority list. Right. And it's usually little stuff. It's usually little stuff like a command that needs to be corrected or something like that. And I'll go through and I'll knock all those out real quick so that by the next stream, I don't have to think about it anymore. Yeah. And um, it, it makes that that's a really just a really been a really helpful little thing for me to do. Yeah. Just like achieving these little tasks even is is like getting things done for the day as well. Right. You get these mm -hmm. little tasks and you're like, yes, all right. I got those three things done that were annoying me. And it could have been like little one second fixes. Right. Yeah. Like you literally just yeah. turn something off or whatever. And it's like, all and, right. Achievement. And it's so crazy satisfying, too. That's, right. That's the big thing. It's crazy satisfying. It's like, oh, yeah. Oh, look at all these things I checked off the list. <laughs> oh, finally, you know. Yeah. And then you just scroll down. And you're like, uh, and there's more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. We can, uh, we can start bouncing a little bit more off chat if you guys want. If you guys want to chime in and ask questions kind of about yeah, what we're oh, doing. Yeah, we're half an hour in already. Yeah, so. it's time flew. I don't have motivation to set up all the fun little things. What do you mean? Why don't you have motivation for that? How do we find the motivation is, is the question you got to ask. And why are you not motivated? That's what I find helps because if you can answer the why, everything else kind of falls into place because maybe it's you don't enjoy that task. And then it's like, okay, if you don't enjoy that task, how can you get around that? Is it so you have to hire somebody to achieve it? Do you need, do you not have, an, like, are you not good at it? And you just need to practice and become better? And then, then it'll like be in your repertoire, and you'll be happy to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something. Some. The, my big roadblock is I have a tendency to make 
mountains out of molehills when it comes to learning how to do something new. Right. Like when I did the when I did the new alerts and all that, I had to really like After Effects. As much as I love Adobe, like After Effects was completely foreign to me. And I'm like, you know what? I have this this great program here, and I've really got to learn how to use it. And I wanted to start doing these new alerts. So, it you know, it, it it's it, I don't want to use the term I lost today. I don't feel like I lost anything. I, I gained so much in knowledge, but I had to take a day and sit and watch videos and and start to teach myself certain things. And Ender sent me some uh, some wonderful links on some other techniques and other things that you can do in After Effects that that are gonna do nothing more than just keep improving the content but sometimes you've got to take you you just want to get it done but you have to take that step back before and learn before you can actually get done what you actually want to get done right and you got to you got to keep that in mind it's not and it's not as bad as you think it is because once you know how to do it then you can take that process you've learned and you can duplicate it like once you learn how to do one alert you can learn how to do 50 of them right the same way so it's taking a task a lot of the time we go oh my god i need an alert an alert it needs to animate it needs to do all these things blah, 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 right and you have this big mm -hmm. task you don't realize it's huge because it sounds simple right but then mm -hmm. you start trying to achieve it and you're like whoa this is way out of my league because i'm trying to achieve this, this layered effect but if you broke it down and said okay i just want an effect that comes in and does this mm -hmm. right and then you learn that and then you start layering and building these layers. And it might take you a month to do that based on the time available. But if you break it down that way, it'll be much more easier to consume the learning process and then mm -hmm. and then go from it. It's like it's like getting into game development. It's like the idea of, okay, I'm gonna make a game and it's gonna this is my idea, right? And then you go into the engine and you're like, all right, time to get to work. And you're like, how do I make the game and do all this? But if you mm -hmm. broke it down and said, okay, this week I'm gonna get a character on the screen and I'm going to be able to walk around with them. That's the goal. And then you just layer that and build it up and build it up and build it up. It might take you a year, but that year process is going to evolve you so much that after that year, that idea of that game is going to be totally different. And you'll yeah. be like, cause you're going to learn so much new things and you got to break things down that way because just looking at the final goal and trying to achieve it is it can, it, it can just walk you down and really, bad path it's it's the whole theory of taking bites out of the elephant instead of trying to swallow the whole elephant right <laughs> and the the thing you know what the cool thing about that process is mike that you just described is that as you evolve you're going to find that your end product is actually going to be better than what you originally anticipated because you did layer it like that you know, it's like, because you're going to learn things along the way. You're going to see things. You're going to be like, oh, I didn't know I could do that. Oh, all right. Well, then maybe I'll throw this in with that alert then along with this other stuff that I'm doing. Or, oh, I can do a full transparency there. Oh, maybe this will look better. Like this, <laughs> when I, when I, when I set up my new alerts this, this last time, um, my wife was asking me, she's, she's like, wow, it took you all day to get those five alerts put up. Well, yes, because I didn't know exactly what I was doing. Right. I would do the alert, I would upload it, I would test it, and it looked like garbage because I didn't have the settings for the animated GIF right, right. or things weren't quite lined up the way they should be, or like, you know, and, and, and so you you move to one step, you test it, make sure you're happy with it, and then move on to the next one. But sometimes when you get to the end result, you're gonna have to go back to maybe step two and do a little bit of tweaking there so that the whole overall product is better. But once you've gone through that process again, and you know, then duplication becomes the thing, right? Then you can take what you've learned and duplicate it across many, like in this case, I'm talking about alerts, but you can do this with just about anything. Yep. You can duplicate it over and over and over again. And then the process becomes embedded. Exactly. The trick is to not let the process that you've embedded become so embedded that you're afraid to try something new the next Change time it. around. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, totally. And Deacon, your question about what would you guys say is a target timeline after making an affiliate uh, to have your stream all tuned in with alerts and, and commands and such, I wouldn't have even put affiliate in that sentence. I would rip that out and just be like, build your stream over time, period. Always be working on something on your stream, whether it be an alert, 
a overlay, a simple image. Like maybe you want to have an image that says join Mar like jo exclamation point play when you want to join the marbles at the start of the screen, right? And just build these elements over time and don't try to tackle it as like, okay, I have to get the stream fine tuned by this date. You know, like don't create this like random end goal to something that you don't even understand yet, right? Because you're still learning. You're just getting started. And that these, these are the daunting tasks that you can create for yourself that can really beat you up over time. Because you'll always be like, oh my God, I don't have my alerts done yet. I don't have my... But just create these little paths for yourself. Get an alert done. Okay, next week I'm going to get the next alert done. I'm going to create a variation. And then just bite-sized pieces one by one. It's so important. Because this is, this is a marathon. This is not... No. If you're getting into streaming, it's not a one month thing. It's not six months. It's not a year. You should be trying to like create something that's going to keep you busy for 10, 20, 30 years. And it's, it could be, it become like your passion project or it could become your career. It could become anything you want it to be. You just have to build it over time. Yeah. And, and Heather, what you just said, we say that all the time. It's, it's not, there is no destination to this journey and you got it, you have to accept that. It's a continuous journey on every single le level, every single level, you're gonna be constantly learning, you're gonna be constantly changing. You know, if, if you really wanna grow, these are things that are gonna have to be in your life all the time. Right. Some Something that, like, a, like along the alerts, Deacon, to throw on top of what Mike just said, we have something now that we didn't used to have. And, and that is we have pre-made alerts, overlays, all that good stuff. And I know a lot of people are afraid to jump on those because it's cookie cutter. You know, it's, it's like my, now my stream is gonna be like, like 15 other people's streams. But here's what I can suggest. Find an overlay, whether you're using Streamlabs, whether you're using stream elements like, like we do, whatever the case may be, go into their pre-made alerts and overlays and honestly, just find something that looks pretty to you, something that looks attractive to you, something that you think that you feel right now would, would lend to your branding or lend to your style and install that. Use that as your basic because now you've got your alerts. Now you've got your basic overlay and all that. And you don't have to worry about that. Okay. You can, you can start streaming. Then as you improve over time, you can make modifications to that setup. The, the setup that I use now is all based on a stream elements basic package that they had available and they're available for free. You don't have to pay anything for them. So I installed that and the alerts, use that as my basis. And then I started building on top of that over time. So that, you know, and then eventually what I did was I kept like their basic text and all that, but I replaced the overlay that was behind it. Then I went in and replaced the text. Take it in, like we're saying, take it in little bites. Make sure that you take it in little bites along the way and make little improvements that way. But if you want to be able to like just get up and rolling, do that. There's nothing wrong with that. Do that and then it'll also help you learn how to modify your overlays and what you want to do up the road. The other thing that I want to speak to, again, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, is you don't like a lot of people will get really really carried away right off the bat with their branding you know and, and what they're going to do and how they're going to put themselves out there and i've seen people spend hundreds of dollars having someone help them design overlays alerts panels emotes a logo all this crazy stuff right and then six months in they realize that that is nothing what their channel ended up being about it was not what they were expecting it doesn't the branding doesn't fall in line any of that so don't get too carried away until you start to see how your community is gonna form, what your channel is gonna end up being about. I, I talk about this all the time. I'm happy to admit that it took me two years before I figured out where my branding and, and where everything needed to be. I finally have it figured out now, but it's been a journey. I've, I've changed my branding and my theming so many times along the way. And I, I, it was like, that was a lesson that I couldn't learn was to just leave it alone. Um, and now we're finally there, but it, it takes time. It yeah. takes time to get there. So don't, don't waste effort either. You know, make sure get to, get to know yourself, get to know your community and how things are going to form with your channel 
and you can build up from there as well. You got you got to get streaming. Like you just have mm -hmm. to get going. Like this is this is a huge note. Is like you can't design. Like a streamer is a designer. You're gonna design a stream. You're gonna design. You're gonna design something around you, whether it be your content or whatever. Right? You're a designer, and you can't design for a platform you don't understand. So if you haven't clicked that go live button once, and you haven't got into the the ecosystem and understood what it means to go live and how you know your alerts work and getting a follow and all this stuff, you can't design for it unless you've done it. It's just mm -hmm. a fact. Like the as I continue to grow as a game developer, I continue to learn new environments and I continue to dive into Twitch to learn more and more. And every time I learn something new, I can design for it. But if you mm -hmm. don't have the basis understanding of things, you can't design for it. So get in, get streaming. Don't overthink it. Don't try to like be like, all right, I got to have the perfect stream when I go live because mm -hmm. it's not going to happen. It's impossible because you don't even understand the ecosystem. So yeah, yeah, just get started, get involved start absorbing information and then start designing once you understand things and that comes right down to branding yeah yeah and, and along the lines of uh, what we opened this conversation with too as far as not letting negativity wear you down understand that what mike just said about the perfect stream make sure remember that while you're streaming too you know, remember that that things are going to go south, that, that not everything's going to be perfect. You're going to learn on the fly. There are going to be a number of situations that you react to very badly and very poorly when you first start streaming, and you're going to learn that, that in layers as well. It's like, oh, oh, okay. And whether it's, tr whether it's how you handle trolls and bots, whether it's how you handle just a problem community member, whether it's how you handle somebody that constantly wants to overstep boundaries with you, things like that. Again, you're gonna learn how to deal with that in layers. So make sure you give yourself that time as well. It doesn't just apply to the technicals, it applies to you and your personality and how you handle situations as well. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Jaysu, you said, should you start a stream with a cam and mic? If you can, try. This is this is the way that I, I say it because it, it, it just breaks it right down to the core level is like we're humans we consume content right and we have many ways to consume content through our senses by removing some of these elements you just mentioned a cam a mic you're removing different elements of the stream that people can engage with right so if you take away your cam take away your mic all you do is have visuals right you have a little bit of audio because you'll have the game sound or whatever if you don't have a mic so you're just satisfying the game. If you add a mic, now you are speaking and you're you're servicing the ears of your viewers. If you add a cam, now you're servicing the eyes and you're creating a full experience. Now, of course, some people can't be on cam, can't do this, can't do that. So now you got to design. How can I satisfy these other senses that I have access to of a human, right? And then you start building in. Federal Ghost is an amazing example of this. He has the um, he has his character in the bottom left or right, and then he'll also have the audio levels going off when he speaks. So that's the way he services those senses. And I think it's very important to think like that because that is what you're designing for. You're designing for a human to consume you. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> if, if you don't, you you need you absolutely need to connect. Like you got to remember again, people aren't there for the game. The game is the catalyst. All right, the game is what will bring people in. They're interested in the game before they're ever interested in, or the content. You know, they're either, you know, they're looking for the game, they're looking for just chatting, they're looking for things that interest them. That's where the start is, okay? That's where the catalyst is. Once that has occurred, what is gonna make them stay with you is you. So if there is no way for them to connect with you, that's, that's one of the things that makes cameras so important. If there's no way for them to connect with you, you are going to have a much tougher time growing than if you than if you had those things to begin with. And you know, Mike, Mike, brought, and I love use I love using Fetty as the example too, because Fetty is Fetty is one of the few streamers that I follow and that I watch and, and really enjoy the content where they are not on the stream. There's a there there's like maybe two that I know of right now. Where they're where they're not present on the stream, but I still love love going in and, and watching their content. But for most of us, unless you have a phobia of the camera, or there's some reason you truly don't want to be on there, and I understand there are some very legitimate reasons not to for certain people. 
um, make sure you find some creative way to to address that then. There needs to be something there for the person to interact with. You know, look, you know, you can look the things like, you know, Snapcam is a great example. Snapcam, if your computer will handle it, can track your face very well, but you can still be behind that mask if you need to. You know, but that still gives people something to identify with. You know, there are, and that's only one program, by the way. There are several different programs you can use to, to do that. Uh, but there's, you know, again, you want to make sure that people can connect. That's the that's the key thing. I don't think my community at this point could ever imagine coming to my stream and me not being down there in the corner. You know, but it, but again, that's that's that connection level. You know, and it's a very 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 key thing. That's how you're going to get more joy out of it, and definitely how your community is going to get more joy out of it as well. Absolutely. Good point. Um, the Marble Dirt. I, I, you said, I have breathing. I have breathing issues. This is why I can't talk on stream a lot. So talk on stream a little bit. Whatever you can achieve. You know, we all have our limitations. I'm trying to overcome one right now, which is standing all stream nonstop. Um, and that's my goal. It's just an achievement I want to try and reach because I've been sitting for like two years straight, and I find it's impacting me. So I'm just trying to make a change. And I have my limitations, my physical limitations within that, but I'll deal with them accordingly and I'll assess with a doctor if I need to uh, make changes. But uh, yeah, just like work within your limitations, like know what they are. You're designing for limitations. That's what you do, right? I have limitations with Twitch, right? I can only do so much with their information. So I design for that. We have so many limitations within the game. So we design for that. You know, we have dis we have limitations within the stream as ourselves, and we can only do so much and and just work within your limitations. There's nothing wrong with that. And just think about it and just be like, okay, well, if I can't talk as much, how can I fill some dead air with something? Or maybe you don't need to. Maybe you, the times you do speak are so wholesome that it generates a massive conversation chat and you just read. <laughs> mm -hmm. You never know, right? Like you, you never know until you can try. Something uh, something else that you can do too, like if you want to talk about, like Mike's talking about design, practical tip I can give you is either use hardware, like Mike and I both use a Go XLR, you know, so you can use a Go XLR, or it's for free, right? In OBS, use a noise gate. Noise gates can block a lot of breath sounds. So if you have, and I know a few people that do this actually, if you've got like breathing issues or like sometimes people's asthma will get real bad or whatever the case may be, you can use those noise gates to take some of that interference and some of that distraction away so that when you do speak, people will focus more on the sound of your voice than anything else. Right. I'm a, I'm a heavy breather myself because I take, because I, I was taught to project, so I do these great big, <gasps> you know, and it's uh, the noise gate helps me take a lot of that, a lot of that interference out of there. Right. So... Well, I get passionate when I difference. talk and I forget to breathe. So oh, yeah. I also have a gate on. <laughs> and then like while I'm I'm like <sighs> Yeah. But yeah, it's like like everybody has their thing. Just just work mm -hmm. within it. That's it. There's nothing wrong with that. And and guaranteed you could look out there and find somebody else who's achieved goals with similar limitations and maybe you could look into that. There's there's so many different streamers on Twitch. You could find anything. And everybody's mm -hmm. found a way to work with their limitations in very unique ways. And mm -hmm. they're all amazing, right? There are there are full partners out there that have never been on stream. Visually. Yeah. They've never they've never been on stream. There are partners out there who hang out with their friends in chat all day and barely speak, but their friends talk more. You know, and it's like and there's nothing wrong with this content, everybody. There's nothing wrong with this content. But like Mike keeps saying, find your way around it. If you find your way around it, if you're willing to put in that time and effort to figure out what is, and it's, it, again, it has to be you, all right? right. It, it has to be a reflection of you. No matter how you handle it, let it be a reflection of you, and then you can take it from there. Yeah, and just one point on the design, because I keep saying design for it, often, and I said this when I was younger, I'm not a designer. I don't know how to design. I don't know how to create. That comes with experience and consuming other content. So if you mm -hmm. don't know how to design yet, 
go consume a crap ton of streams, a crap ton of videos, play some games, whatever you're designing for die. Like that's why I said, just get streaming because you'll start mm -hmm. consuming information and learning. Once you have knowledge, then you can project that onto your designs because that's where yeah. everything comes from. When I was a kid, when I was younger, I was like, I don't know how to design. I don't know how to do this. this is a, it's life experience. You just need to consume the information. As you get older, when you hit 25, 30, you now have like essentially what? what like what do they call it? When, when are you like actually cognitive as a human and able to retain the information? It was like, like eight, nine? Like when, like when you're actually I'm fully there, you know? I don't know what the term is. I'm not a doctor, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, when you're when you're really fully able to, to process all that, I thought it was actually as early. I don't know for sure myself, but I thought it was as early as like maybe five. Okay, is where that that those skills really really begin to like like fully form. Um, possibly even earlier. I don't know. I see. I don't know. I, being a parent, I've watched my I watched my kids do some pretty amazing things really early on that I didn't think they were capable of. So, yeah. But yeah, like like you know, again, the ability to consume, look at it. Like, you know, the, the thing for me, Mike, was always going out and, and looking at what made me jealous. Like, if I went to somebody's stream and went, I am I am really, really jealous about what they're doing. That's, like, really, really good. And if I saw it, that's when I would look at it and see what I could take back to, you know, apply to my own content. Right. But it's exactly what you're talking about. Consume it, think about it, and then put it back out there, but it's got to be you, you know, it's, it's either going to be something that you saw somebody else did that you put your own twist on. Maybe it's something that, um, that just it sparks another idea completely in you, things like that. Don't be, don't be afraid to look at that stuff though and give it a try. Like I've seen some really amazing alerts yeah. go off in streams that I'm like, that is so insanely creative, you know, that, and, and, and again, you you look at it, you copy it and, you know, imitation is a way of learning. Totally. Imitation or figuring out how they did that is a is a way of learning. So yeah, and and yeah, profane. I know it's life experience. I don't like to say life experience because often people connect that with like age. Oh, I'm not old enough to do that, and I don't perceive it that way. I think it's more if you like. Let's say you're young. If you wanted to just start designing for something, just start consuming a great crap ton of content of it. Like I watch Twitch every single night. And I've been watching it since we started Marbles. Every single night, I watch somebody on Twitch. You most of the time is playing Marbles, and and I just consume what they're doing, understand the way they play the game, understand how they're streaming, why they're interacting, how they're interacting with their fan base, and their community, and just learn, 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 and continue to put elements into the game, because that's what our game is built on. So and and I wouldn't be able to do that if I just sat in my own little design space and didn't consume other people's content and just continued putting random features into marbles that I perceived were good. But now it's like, I'm just consuming as much as possible so I can make informed decisions for the community that we're, we're involved in, which is Twitch. So that's where we live. So that's where I make sure I live because I, I can only learn by doing. There's only like, there's only one way to learn is continue, continue to consume it. Yeah. So it's so important. And so that's why I don't say life experience. It's more just absorb, <laughs> be a sponge. There's there's so many ways to consume content too now, right, Jamie? Like oh, across yeah. all the platforms, you have all all types. If you're bad at watching videos, you can't watch a video. Go find text somewhere. Most people convert their content into all the different platforms, right? And it could be written form. It could be an article. It could be audio only. It could be voice. Or sorry, it could be um video, and just consume find a way to consume it look at look at who look at who's doing the camera work you love look, look at who's doing and, and and you're gonna find that different people do different things better than others so who like who's doing the best camera work out of everybody you watch who's got the best sound quality out of everybody you watch um who's got the coolest alerts who's got the coolest overlay and don't be afraid by the way to reach out to see if they're willing to share you would be surprised how much people are willing to share, you know, as far as what they've learned and, and because, and here's what happens. Here's what, what a lot of experienced content creators have figured out. Somebody comes and asks you how you do something in particular. Now, if it's a basic, you should probably be directing them to one of the 50 YouTube videos that's already out there. It's like, how do you set up OBS? 
You want to learn how to set up OBS? There's a hundred videos out there already on setting up OBS. But if somebody comes and asks you about something that's specific to you, you know, something that you've done that's a little more advanced, what a lot of experienced content creators have learned is if they show others, and this is the trick, all right? Show others and then go back and check and see what that person is doing. They've probably done it and thrown a twist on it that they hadn't thought of. So by throwing that information out there, it ends up coming back to you in a more advanced form. And then the person you taught has now taught you something as well. And, and that you've networked. Does, that does, you've just, and you've just networked, exactly. Now And now, not only have you made a friend, but now everything has come full circle. So, yeah. you know, and, and there are some things, um, just talking along the lines of other content creation real quick, there are some things that you're not going to be able to explain in two minutes. And don't throw away the idea or the possibility of like doing a YouTube video. Like I get asked about the kaleidoscope cameras all the time, which when I actually do the video to show people this, it's going to be, you're going to be, you're going to smack your forehead. You're like, it's that simple. It's like, yes, it's that simple. But um, when it comes to something like that, again, that you can't just describe or you don't want to repeat yourself a hundred times on how to do the process, don't, throw away the possibility of doing a short video on like Twitter or, you know, I don't think you could probably fit it in TikTok, but like on Twitter or on YouTube or something like that to share that with others as well. Because once that information gets out there, again, you're, you're going to see it at some point, I can guarantee you, you're going to see it reiterated right back to you. And when that's the case, you will probably learn something because that person during their process figured something out or came up with an idea that you hadn't thought of. And then you can take it, grind it out, and then spit it back out, and somebody else is gonna learn from that. That's how you'll see streams, especially within like networked communities, you'll see streams that imitate each other, but also improve on each other. Yeah, yeah don't, and, and if somebody, by the way, just throwing this out there real quick, if somebody copies you, be flattered. Don't get angry. I've seen that come up a couple of times in the last couple of months within my my group of, of streamer friends. Like, oh, so-and-so copied what I was doing. And? And that means they liked what you were doing and they wanted to incorporate it into theirs as well. I yep. mean, whenever, if I see somebody copy something I did, to me, that's a chance to go open up a conversation. Right. And talk to them about how they figured it out. Did they maybe do something a little bit better than I did? It's a learning opportunity, so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but like you can't, like, Profanity asked that. I love that you went into that conversation, Jamie, because Profanity just above asked about imitation and, you know, how you deal with it. And the thing mm -hmm. is, you don't deal with it and, and you, you can network with the person. But this is, this is a huge thing. It's like, there's a lot of games out there that are starting to do things like marbles, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't, personally, I don't perceive that as like, they're copying me, like, whatever, right? But I per perceive that as like, okay, this is starting to get big enough and people are enjoying it enough that others want to do the same thing. Now, the way that I look at it is like, okay, now other people are playing. How do I stay more advanced than them? How do my ideas advance further than the, their copied ideas of ours, right? And then also keep an eye on what they're doing because I could be like, oh, people actually like this or people are doing this little thing and enjoying it. All right, how can we do that? Fortnite and mm -hmm. Fortnite and Apex have been going back and forth a lot with this stuff. If you've been watching, they copy little elements of each other, and it's really cool because when games do that, they get better and better because it's like a team. It's like a team effort. Like Apex has their crowd and Fortnite has their crowd. Yeah, they'll have the people who jump back and forth like me, but like it's not like I hate one or the other. It's just I'm just playing both games. So. If you perceive it as like somebody's stealing from you, it's going to walk you into a negative and it's going to make you act in a negative way. If you perceive it as something as a positive, you're going to go, okay, how do I grow on this? How do I get better? If this person's able to copy me, how do I create something so complex that maybe they won't be able to copy me? And people will go, whoa. And then that's when you start walking into true innovation. Because if you create something that people are like, whoa, how do they do this? Then people start yeah. talking. I was just, I was laughing at Darcy Joe's comment. I started streaming. I stole that idea from everyone on Twitch. Come at me. <laughs> <laughs> but 
but it's you know the other thing too um that you really need to do when it comes to like like copying and all that and, and I, I have to use i'm going to use a really quick example here um you are not you're not as original as you think you are your personality is very unique to you but you are not as original as you as you think you are when i first started doing kaleidoscope scenes um this was and this was even before i started do, using the black light i had a lot of people come to me and actually directly accuse me of imitating this streamer that streamer the other streamer right and all three guesses and i remember the name specifically okay all three guesses were completely wrong completely wrong my my influence came from a completely outside source when it came to the kaleidoscope cameras i looked them up figured out how to do them. And then just exactly like what we're talking about, I started layering. It's like, I bet I could build a black light into this. I bet I could build some makeup into this. I bet I could, you know, and there there were all these ideas that started hitting. Um, the most recent one I figured out is how to do what I call the flash, which is it makes me flash and then it ripples so that whatever I've done, it looks like a light trailing through. What happens is eventually you go from the point where people are gonna look at you and say you're imitating X, Y, or Z, and then you move into that true innovation stage because now it goes back to the layers we were talking about earlier. You've layered all this stuff on top of. Um, but it's, it's it, you're, you're, when I say you're not as original as you think you are, there are so many streamers out there on Twitch now that they may not be copying you. That inspiration may have come from someplace else completely. Yeah. You know, or they found that YouTube video that was buried, you know, three years ago that they were able to grab some ideas from. There's so much content out there that you can consume. I understand it can be very easy to look at what somebody is doing and think they copied you, but they may have copied somebody else completely. And you have to bear in mind that as artists, we steal from each other all the time. Right. The trick is, again, um, if you if you like when you've taken something from another streamer or another content creator that you're going to incorporate on your own the key thing is again take it but take it with a twist make it yours make it your own and then eventually what you're going to do is again you're going to build layers on top of that and then it's really going to become you because you're doing something that nobody else has been has done yet or is right. doing now well it, another good example is marbles there was actually a marbles game before marbles on twitch in a channel, but it was locked down to a certain channel. 3D Marbles, rolling down a hill. Uh, it was, a, I think they had like two tracks or something, but chat could join as a marble. But I then I, they got sponsored by uh, Gushers or something, and then the Marbles became Gushers, and then it died, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know the hit, but anyways, I didn't know about that until we were live on Twitch with Marbles. Like, legit, like I didn't even know about that game. And then I was like, whoa, somebody's already done it. Then I, I looked mm. into it and I was like, why didn't it why didn't it succeed? Succeed, yeah. My theory is he didn't or they I don't even know who developed it. They didn't release it to the public. They kept it for yeah. themselves for a channel, right? And when you do that, it doesn't spread. You can't because people are just mm -hmm. interacting it from the front end. We released it. Yeah. We released it right from the start. But that's that's the same thing. Is like ideas come from many different places. Mm -hmm. And number one to think that number one, they stole it directly from you as well is. That's also walking into like danger villas, right? Like, how yeah, do you know oh, they yeah. got it from you? Well, or whatever, and, and, right? Yeah, ideas that aren't let loose out into the wild like that don't grow. That's the that's the other thing too. Like, there's so much, um, and I've I've seen it, it. It's been great to watch marbles grow up because with marbles, like I've seen you incorporate so many things into the game that came ideas that came back out of the community or right. simple, like like one of the things that, that you do that I don't think enough people appreciate is you go out and hang out in, in, in Marble Streamer streams and analyze and see what they're going through. You see what's going on because there's things that I've seen you implement that I don't think anybody ever asked for, but we really wanted. We just didn't realize we really wanted it. And that comes from, again, like, like again, that idea, that information, the game, all that being out there. And you can see, like, people are going to try to do things with the game that, that you've never imagined, you know, or people are going to come to you with ideas about your stream that you never really thought of. And again, when, when that's all out there and that's all gelling, it's a really big deal because then that means improvements for everybody involved. Right. 
you know so so again it's it's that if you do this with all of your like content and all your creativity and all that and you don't want to share it with anybody it doesn't really work that doesn't really work as you watch these ideas gel and swirl around and then get spit back out to you it's like oh oh i could have done that or you know what i can do that and i'm going to do this on top of it right and just you know and and just you know what's one it's almost like one upping yourself yeah, exactly you know some somebody else might have taken the idea and ran with it but then you look at it and you go you know now that i see it from this side of the of the screen i bet i could throw this other thing on top of it and make it a little bit better right you know? and it's it's great it's a really cool process it's a really cool process yeah totally all right we're eight minutes over so <laughs> but dude that was like i feel like this was like such an informative podcast today for 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 one that we did honestly by the seat of our pants everybody, yeah yeah this was this went really well this went really well <laughs> we do this every uh friday morning before community day danes bomb so feel free to pop back in we're trying to just inform the community and share just you know share our ideas share mm -hmm. what we're what's on our mind for the week and i think maybe that's what we need to do more is less try to plan for it and just start yapping and just see yeah. where it goes right yeah, talk talk about our weeks, things that came up during the week and all that, because there's always, I mean, there, there's always plenty to talk about. There's always plenty to talk about. There's so much going on, both with the game and, you know, with Twitch as a whole, and we have so many new streamers coming in that, uh, you know, yeah, there's always going to be plenty to talk about. Yeah. I don't think we're going to ever run out of it. Until well, it's we just, run out of breath, it's an evolving so. industry, and while it is, there's going to be so much to discuss and all this mm -hmm. new stuff that's coming up. So yeah, guys. Anyways, thanks for stopping in. I gotta we're gonna hop off and get ready for community day. But uh thanks for stopping in and we'll see you guys uh in about forty one minutes. Okay. Yeah, and I'll see everybody in about five hours. So we'll see you then. <laughs> All right, guys. Take care. Bye guys.